Hello and welcome to Metal Labs. On today's episode, we're gonna make this dum dum smart. Let me define what I mean by smart. I don't care about it being app controlled. That's not what I'm about. I still have to put stuff in. There's no, there's no problem for me to do this. What I have a problem with is putting in the soap because that is a process in this household. Let me, let me show you. First, I have to load stuff in, right? Then I close it because I have to get here to get out the, the detergent. So then I have to open this again. I have to open this. I have to put, I have to put it in there. And I have to close this. I have to close this. I have to close, I have to open this. I have to put this back. And I have to close this. And I have to open this again to then turn it on. That's, that's so many steps. Yes, I, I'm, I know they make washing machines that already do that, but those cost in like the range of like 600 pounds. And may I remind you, I'm unemployed. So, I'm gonna add a, a dispenser that, that detects when I turn it on, and then it fills up the right amount of detergent. How exactly I'm going to do that, I don't know yet, but I'm sure the whiteboard version of me knows exactly what I'm going to do. So uh, let's, let's go over to him. Okay, so we have our big bottle of detergent and we have our washing machine. Now obviously we want the detergent to go in to the washing machine, right? But to do that, we're going to need some kind of pump. Uh, what kind of pump? I don't know yet, that's for future me to figure out. To control a pump, we're going to need a motor driver, like that. And to control the motor driver, we're going to need some kind of microcontroller, probably a D1 Mini. So now we need to find a way of telling the microcontroller when the washing machine is doing stuff, so that it knows to dispense. Originally, I was just gonna like reach into the washing machine and like scramble its brain and make it tell me what it's doing. But uh, for multiple reasons, one of them being I don't technically own it, um, I can't do that. So I'm gonna need some kind of an input device so that I can tell the microcontroller when to do something. I'm gonna opt for a little LCD screen that has like menu items and like maybe a dial so that I can click and select things. This also gives me expandability. In my household, we only use detergent. We don't use like fabric softener or anything like that. But like what usually happens after I make, hold on, it's gonna bug me that I'm not connecting these things. But what usually happens when I make something like this is like, hey, why can't it do this? Why can't it do this? Why can't it do this? To mitigate that, I wanna find a way of doing it so that I can add multiple pumps going into multiple bottles and different channels of the thing, all controlled with like the same microcontroller. And then like different options on the screen. Blah, 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 blah. So what I need the desk version of me to do is to figure out what pump we are using, uh, question mark, uh, write some code to go on the microcontroller, design some kind of a case to go in this so that it doesn't look like a bunch of loose wiring. So let's go over to me over there, figuring out what, uh, what I'm doing about this and this and that. I have three potential pumps I could use. Let's start with this one. This is like a generic um, water pump. Uh, it doesn't do well with viscous fluid, so it's not gonna work for this. The second is this paraseptic pump. It works pretty well with viscous fluids, but when I tested it with the, uh, with the detergent we use, it was super slow. Like it would take like about half an hour to fill up the, uh, the required amount. Uh, so I went scouring and then I found this which is called a gear pump. There's two little gears in here that like do a really good job of pulling up whatever liquid you want it to pull up. It's described as water and oil pump, but it works really darn well for what I need it to do. 
and it might actually help me revive a project that I thought was dead because I couldn't find a pump that was strong enough. I haven't been able to test whether it has enough head pressure to push it all the way back up again, but I'm hoping with enough voltage, it won't be a problem. Now that I know what pump to use, I can put together the electronics and we can start writing some code. Okay, I've made the electronics. I hate them and I will change them, but I just wanna go over what's happening. Powering everything, Raspberry Pi Pico. Big change for me, I usually use the D1 Mini. Now I'm using the Pico, I'm as surprised as you are. Uh, we've got some buttons on the screen and motor driver. Motor driver runs the motor, we all know how that works. So, I've got a little menu system that uh, I wanna say I coded, but I actually got AI to do it for me. Uh, I've got three options on here. I've got a button that goes left and right. And then when I press the, uh, the center select button, it actually prints out a thing in my, in my command line. What I hate about it is it's like, it's huge. It's chunky. It's this, it, it looks awful. These cables are way too rigid. If I, if I take this over there and show you next to the thing, if I put this where I'm planning to put this, which is like up there, first of all, I've got exposed electronics and that's a metal top, so uh, not worth it being powered. Anyway, this, I've got cables running down here and it just gets in the way of like seeing stuff here. So I, I don't like this, this is too thick and the door won't close properly as well. So um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do this again but nicer with smaller electronics. So yeah, when I say smaller electronics, I'm, I'm literally, I'm using a tiny little OLED screen with like three tiny buttons instead of this gigantic monstrosity that I've made. And these cables are so thick, they're so rigid, I hate them. So yeah, let me remake this and I will be back with an update. Okay. I have remade the uh, the screen and the buttons. I've, I've kept this bit the same because it works. So I have completely remade this and it's so much smaller and so much cuter. Uh, I'll get a close up of it and I'll show you how it works. So as you can see, it's a lot more compact and I've had to reprogram the UI. Uh, I asked the AI to reprogram the UI. And as you can see here, I've got 20 milliliters 25 milliliters and 30 milliliters. And you can kind of keep adding however many milliliters you want. I only need those three options. And if I click select, I get a little dispensing thing and it tells me how long it's going to take to dispense. It's very cute. I love it. Uh, now let's go install it on the machine. Okay, so I've got my pump um, mounted <laughs> on the bottle. Uh, it's gonna work for now. Uh, I will 3D print something to hold that in place. Anywho, let's move on to the washing machine. So I've already run cables for power and for the motor here. So let's just plug those in. That's my power. And that's my motor. So in the time it took me to get from my desk to over here, I programmed in a purge setting, which if I select it, it starts purging the tube with soap. Now that I know the system works, I'm going to 3D print some parts to like make this all pretty down here. Uh, not too pretty, got to keep it a certain level of junk. So um, yeah, I'll be back when that's done. Ish. I'm done 3D printing. Remember when I said I need to keep it a little bit junk? So uh, this is wrapped in paper to prevent shorting. So is this. And I 3D printed a little holder for this to make it look prettier. Let's go install it. I'm using one of my favorite technologies to attach this to the washing machine, Plutac. And there it is. Look, it even closes properly. Isn't that nice? So now I can finally wash my hoodie. If I put that in there, turn this on, uh, tell it to dispense 20 milliliters. It's now dispensing into the machine and I can turn it on. And with that, thank you for watching. Um, support me on Patreon, follow me on all the other platforms, links in the description for all the code and everything else. And um, I'll see you next time. Ba -da -ba.